Well, guys, got a buck on set here. Um, Want to talk to you about it real quick. So if you're like me, you've been looking at this thing since it came out and thought, well, that's not too bad of a knife. And you know what? It's not, actually. So I finally just picked this up the other day. Uh, wanting to get something in S45 VN, and I have too many Spyderco PM2, so I thought, well, I'm going to give my money to Buck this time. So I went and got one. Uh, I'm not disappointed. Uh, there are some things about this that people put bad reviews on, but overall, it's not a bad knife. So we'll go through it real quick. I'm just going to make this a short take. Um, I'm just doing a size comparison here. Some of you may have a, you know, are familiar with the big old monster Spyderco um, police at the top here, which is a four and a quarter inch blade. Pretty, pretty big knife overall. Uh, below that is a Benchmade Griptilian, which many of you have, and it has some AWT scales on it. Uh, the onset's, uh, you know, pr pretty similar in size to the um, Griptilian, right? Right in about the three and a half inch blade range. Um, and then it's not, obviously, not, not, not too many knives, not too many fully knives are as big as the police. It's just kind of a honker. Um, so this onset, you know, it's a frame lock flipper. Like, that's my favorite type these days. I have all types, but I prefer frame lock flippers. I like them a lot. Um, really oddball clip on this on this buck. They do two like pedestal style like spacer um, screws in through spacers screws through the spacers to hold the clip onto the to the scale body. And the scale here they kind of cheesed out and did steel, but you know you can't argue with steel. And weight wise, um, it is not overly heavy, so that's not the problem. It's it's actually just it feels just right weight wise. But, you know, the, the gold standards tie these days, and this knife's like 187 bucks. so um would have been nice they found a way to put tie on here, but whatever, you know. Um, it's got kind of a tumbled looking um, uh, or a stone, like a stone wash type finish clip. The clip's actually, you know, really good, and, and everything on this knife is, is friendly to the hands. Like, there's nothing that sticks out that's sharp or pointy or something that might hurt you. Um... You know, so that's not a problem. It's just that the clip's unique and it's just a little awkward. I don't like all the body screws and these clip screws are all T6, which is a little wimpy. The over travel stop, which is nice they have, that's T6. The pivot screw, oddly, is a T10 on this knife, but that's not a bad thing. Um, you can see the, the it's got the Boss uh, Heat Treat uh S45 is going to be my first one I can play around with and see how, how it works. Um, you know, it's got a little bit of jimping here, which is nice because I like I like the feel of that. Um, the flipper's hollowed a little bit, which I like. It just it has a really nice look to it. Um, Action-wise, you know, the action's really good overall. Um, I don't have any problems with the action on this thing. I think it's super slick. I'm going to switch hands here uh, to my primary hand, but... You know, it, it's actually surprisingly smooth on this knife, um, the way this blade launches. Uh, and you can see that hollowed out. It looks like a triangle style. I mean, it's got a little bit of curve on this side. But it looks pretty amazing, the flipper on this thing. And the action's quite snappy. I mean, I don't, I've don't. i got strong hands. I can put a lot of force on the tab if I have to, but I'm not going to do that. Just one quick touch, and the thing's out. I mean, it's really, really slick. So they've got a really super nice action. It locks up good every time. Um, I, you know, I don't have any complaints about the action. The only thing they did is they cheesed out and they didn't put a lock bar insert, which is, I hate to see that, but, you know, it is what it is. So um, the G10, uh, it's got like a little tiny, you can probably see it's got a micro texture on it, but it's just, just enough texture that it, it doesn't snag you like some sharp D G10s I've had. I love G10 as a material, but I've seen like um, off-grid knives, for for example, they do a G10 that has so much texture, it actually tears your pocket up. This is not that. This is very, very micro texture, but it does grip very well and it sticks to your hand well. So this is a nice G10. It's a pretty generous size slab on there too. They got nice spacers, you know, in the back, just like you see on other higher end knives. Um, but look at this grind on this thing. I mean, Buck's grinds lately, I just don't get it. I mean, and they're not even, it, it's not even that even. So you can see that the width changes. Hard to tell on the video, maybe. But the width of that grind changes from the back of the blade to the front of the blade. You can see right this one here in the middle on this side. 
as it gets to the curve towards the tip, you can see how it gets a little more shallow and then it's more pronounced at the tip. So the, their grinds are just kind of, ugh. So there's the little nitpicks. You know, the grind isn't the best. It is a, it is a flat ground blade. It's got some decent stock on it. Blade stock uh, is respectable. Um, it's just, it's got a nice feel to it. it you know, with this curve, it's got like this curved handle on it. It actually feels really good. Um, I like everything about it so far. I, I don't think, you know, the price is off. I just, I prefer having a tie handle there. Um, the clip's a little awkward, although there's nothing wrong with it. Um, and it does give you kind of a deep carry option the way the clip's set up. It's got over travel, which is good. That that might not having the lock bar insert is, is kind of a pain. Uh, hopefully that doesn't run into a problem long term. Uh, but, you know, Buck's good for... Um, their heat treat generally and hopefully the blades are real cutter and long term i'm going to enjoy this knife but i like the feel of it i like everything about it and they've got a new one out that's like two five, 205 or something like that that is a olive drab g10 and a black coated blade black cerakote um and then they still use the same scale on this side that silver colored uh finish on the steel so <clears throat> I don't know if it's worth the extra money. I kind of like the satin blade like this. It just, you know, handles abuse really well. And I'm going to make this my, my, one of my EDCs. It's going to be a regular part of the rotation and uh, I'm not going to be nice to it. <laughs> I'm not going to use it as a pry bar or anything. I don't do that with any of my cutting tools, but I'm actually going to cut with this thing and, you know, I'm not going to sweat it and um, we'll see. But yeah, this is a nice knife, guys. I don't know. You know, everyone's different. Everyone has different likes and, and, you know, dislikes, but I'd have to say that they've got a pretty good knife here, and I hope Buck stays on this uh, this direction because um, I want to see them do more of these flipper frame locks. They're just not doing too many of them. They only have a couple in their lineup. And there are other knives they have, like, you know, their, oh, their Spitfire and um, their Sprint Ops and their Sprint Pro. Those liner locks are pretty, they're not that tough of knives. They're nice looking, um, but at their price point, uh, they're kind of overpriced. I think for what you get, but you know, this onset, um, I think this is a real serious knife that, you know, it's worthy of consideration. Go ahead and get one. I think, I think you'll be pleased.